Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Ruby Moss Cottage Yurt Cast, episode 64. This is our yurt, our yom sweet yom, high up in the Great Smoky Mountains. Ah, how we love this place. This definitely is our heartbeat. You can see the inside of our yurt here. And, um, oh, how I miss it. We are not there right now. We are in Wisconsin. So this podcast will be more about our loft life in the big city here in Milwaukee. We've recently uh, had to transfer up here just for a, a season or two while my husband has some work to do. And we are not living in the yurt However, I will be going back and visiting often, and now uh, this recording is from our loft here in uh, Milwaukee. So, lots of snow, lots of fun things going on here. I look forward to sharing the crafty life with you of everything we've been doing. But first of all, I'm going to give you a tour of the before of the loft and then what I have done with it since we've been here. So I hope you grab yourself a cuppa, make yourself comfortable, and let's just spend some time together with all things crafty. curtains there and I found these at an antique store is the spare bedroom and it's where my husband keeps his clothes and it's not the neatest so I keep my laundry in here yeah so anyway that's not there's nothing to talk about there This is the master bedroom, and so I'll tell you everything I've done. I've added rugs, of course. Um, whoops, there's some clothes right there that I need to put away. Um, this blind, it was an old roll down blind, and I loved it. And it had some tears in it, so I wanted to use it and so I just glued butterflies and flowers onto it so that it would look a little bohemian and I could just repurpose it. So this is um, our bedroom. The doors to the closet were, um, they were pretty sliding wood doors, but they did not have a ra uh, track on the bottom. So they drug and they made a horrible racket. So I took those off and I hung those velvet curtains. And then I've got this hanging lamp here. I've got to get a shade for. That's my lemon tree with my little kitty. <laughs> and then I moved this piece of furniture in here. It was in the living room area. We brought the TV. So this is our bedroom. Try and go slow so you can see it again. I will tell you about these blankets here in a minute. So that's the master bedroom.
This is our bathroom. Oh, excuse the curling iron. I mean the straightening iron and the towel. But anyway, I hung new shower curtains and that's about all. I brought this in. They had this in beside the bed, so I brought that there. I think that is all that we've done in here. I hung those fairy lights. Um, yeah, stuck some of our photos up there. That is about all that's in here. Let's get to the main area. There's the door that you come through. Um, this area, I just have our little basket of hats and mittens and scarves and slippers and stuff. I really don't know what I'm doing there. This is just uh, my little work table. I uh, keep my shawls on the back of the chairs. I didn't bring any shawls except for this one and then the one I finished recently. But here's where I sit and plot and plan. I bought this little needlework uh, picture at an antique shop. And there's one of my plants. You'll be able to see my plants throughout. So then you come in, here's our living area. Totally different. I took down the curtains and I added these shears. And it's such a bright day. You can still see the snow on the ground out there, but it's sunny today and it's bright and beautiful. So, but yeah, there's some more of my plants that I've brought. I threw one of those, um, oh, I can't think of the name of those throws now, blankets. one on there. I bought this stand at the same, no, no, it wasn't the same. It was the same trip to West Virginia, but uh, this little bamboo stand, I bought it while we were antiquing. We went antiquing one day with my sister-in-law and her husband, or I guess my husband's brother and his wife, which I think of her as a sister. So there's that. And then, okay. I, as you can see, I totally rearranged the furniture, but this sofa, okay, I, I kind of freak out about going in and um, sitting on other furniture that other people have sat on. Like, like this has been an Airbnb, so it was furnished with this sofa and the main furniture, and I just couldn't sit on that, that sofa. So... This blanket here, I bought at a little craft place here, and it was $30. Fair price for those. But I saw this on Amazon. You could buy a five pack of them for like 50 some dollars. So I bought the five pack, and on this sofa, I used three of them. So one, two, three. They're so pretty, I'm so excited. I will put that link in Amazon uh, to where I bought the pillows on Amazon. This is a blanket that I knit. I don't remember what the um, the pattern is, but it's I used Noro yarn, and you wouldn't think it would be soft, but it is one of my favorite blankets. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, this piece right here. It was um, a chest, like a, yeah, like a wooden chest. And we were in an antique store and the guy said, everything in here is 40% off. So I've looked at the tag and he only wanted like 18 something for it. So by the time we took the 40% off, it was $12. So I popped it up on its side so I could use it as a stand. And then the inside compartments now serve as shelves. So. I was excited to find that. Um, that
that as far as my little thrifting goes. I'm trying to show you things. I got this cart here. I'm at an antique store, and so I'm just putting my whatnots on it. I brought this rug that I had crocheted. I brought it from the yurt. This over here is my little crafty nook area. It's still a mess. I've got to get shelving and everything. Like right here are some project bags and some yarn. This middle bag right here is full of projects that I need to be working on. Um, got my sewing machine. And I've got, I did order this tree right here so I can hang my bags on that I brought. I got this little bag at an antique shop here. It was so cute. Um, so yeah, this is my little crotty nook. When I sew, which I haven't yet since I've been here, I will be sitting over there sewing. Kitchen. What have I done here? I've put some rugs down. I found this rug at um, a little antique shop. Oh, I put this backsplash up because it was just painted and it was so hard to, like if something splashed up on it, it was so hard to clean up. So I just got this pick and steel, pick, no, stick and peel stuff that I put up there and it wipes down so nicely. And um, don't think we've done. I took the one drapes down that she had in here and I put shears up. And that is just about all in here. So let me step back so you can see the kitchen area. And then, well, let me turn this way so you can see. So that's the kitchen area. This is my crafty little area. Try not to rush it. And then you, in, looking in from the kitchen is our little um, living area. I don't want the window to put a glare on everything. Quite different than video number one, right? To the right is the door that we go down the steps. So this is our little loft life. Into the master bedroom. So much other fun things I want to find and put in here, of course, more plants, but I'm so happy that I have my plants up here. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed that little montage I put together. It is um, coming together here. So slowly but surely, I'm getting it to feel cozy and homey again. So welcome. Let me start by saying welcome to any new viewers and welcome to the returning viewers. 
Yes, we are in Wisconsin. No, we are not at the yurt. Hopefully, uh, the next uh, time I podcast, I will be podcasting from the yurt because I'm going back there next month. So we do still own the yurt. For those of you who are trying to figure out what in the world is going on, and we uh, are here short term. A short term could be six months, could be two years. We don't know yet. We're just riding the wave and making the best of it. I uh, often will we'll be walking the winding staircase up to the uh, your the loft, and um, we'll say, "What in the world are we doing on a winding staircase up to a loft in Wisconsin?" We just how in the world did life bring us here? But it has, and we are embracing it, enjoying uh, all the newness of this season of our life. So if you have tuned in thinking, oh, I want to watch a video about yurt life. Well, those are going to be hit and miss. The next time I record, I'm hoping to record from the yurt because I will be there in March sometime. So maybe the next episode or maybe not the next one, but the next one after that. I'm going to do my best to start recording every two weeks. It has been a while, I know, and I'm sorry for that, but I've just been so, so in the mindset of just getting acclimated here and um, setting up house, and I've been doing a lot of knitting, and uh, I just haven't taken the time to record because it's a lot of work. I've just been kind of in a lazy season of life, but I'm going to do my best to start recording every two weeks because I need that. I am in a place where I know absolutely no one. So this is my little community here. I love all of your feedback. I love our relationships that we have. So I'm going to do my best that I can start recording every two weeks to have more of an interaction. I hope you've got your cuppa. I've got mine. It's not the... Uh, what was this, the, the, the take it one stitch at a time cup that my sister and I bought at Hobby Lobby, if you're stateside. Uh, that was in the dishwasher. I didn't feel like hand washing it, so I grabbed this one, but I do have gingerbread coffee from Trader Joe's with their uh, vanilla creamer, and it's delicious. Trader Joe's coffee is really good, I have discovered. Okay, let's get in. My name is Joyce, in case you're new. Not Ruby, that would be my grandmother, but you can call me Ruby if that's easier for you. I will answer to just about anything. This is a crofting podcast with lifestyle woven in. I was thinking maybe I should do the lifestyle podcasts like Yurt Life or uh, Loft Life. I should maybe do those separate and have shorter videos on that. Or I can just leave them with this, with the, with the crofting podcast. I don't know. Um, you can tell me what you think. If you enjoy seeing that or if you go, no. I really just want to tune in for the crofty life. And if you would just put all that housekeeping, that uh, that housekeeping or that whatever, whatever life you live in another podcast. Or if you just like to see it all together. Let me know. Um, just kind of. Tell me what, what you all were thinking on that side of the camera. But as for now, and as always, I've just put them all together. And um, if you're just tuning in for the lifestyle podcast, that's over. Now, well, I shouldn't say that. My lifestyle is crofting. So I'm going to be adding that in here. Uh, I will talk about my books, what's in my book bag, what's in my bags, what I'm working on, what's out of my bags, what I've finished. Um, I think that's it. I've got a little something here that was a gift bag that was given to me. Um, so we can just get started on the chatty thing. So how have you been? I've been good. You may notice there's something different. Okay, the, the sun is shining now. When I sat up, the sun was not shining. So I know there's probably a little bit of a something that is the kitchen. So I'm sitting on our sofa and looking out the big picture window. And um, and now I'm seeing the sun has popped out, which is a rare thing here, and um, in the winter at least. And I'm getting a little bit of a halo back there. But if you can deal with it, I can deal with it. But I don't know if you can tell. 
I have done something different to my hair. I have decided that I'm going to go gray. And what brought me to that decision, you ask? Well, I have a, my hairstylist I have used for years and years and years. I only trust her with my hair because until I found her, I tried so many different colorists and hairstylists and they just didn't know what to do with my hair. My hair is very thick, it's very coarse, and it has calyx, and she is like amazing. So I knew, I, I pretty much mapped out on the calendar this year when I would be going back to Charlotte to celebrate different things. And I knew that when I was finished in March that I wouldn't be back until like June. And I knew that was too long to go without having my hair colored. And I thought, I there is no way I'm going to turn my hair over to someone here. I'm not, it would take me a long time to find someone that I trusted. And then would they even know what to do with my hair? So I thought, I know I can go that long without getting it cut. That's no big deal. But colored was the problem. So I knew that I would probably have about this much gray um, before. And I thought, well, I can't do that. And then I thought, well, I don't want to chop it all off really short and start letting it go gray. So we are just, I don't, we, not me, I'm just sitting in the chair and she's bringing in the gray subtly and slowly. That's not real subtle, as you can tell. This is real. My hair is growing such that this section is gray and it, each section, it gets darker and darker to where underneath down here, there's no gray or very, very little. So I don't know what, how it's going to look. Anyway, I'm going to let it start going gray. You know what? I thought, first of all, I can always start coloring it again if I don't like it. And second of all, like my mom is 84 and she just started going gray. I mean, like, she, no, she just stopped coloring her hair last fall. So she's just now having to learn to deal with how to fix her hair being totally white. So she's just starting. It's a whole new thing for her. And I'm thinking in my mind, she's doing a great job of it. But I'm thinking, I don't want to wait till I am 85 or 84 to start to stop coloring my hair and then have to learn to deal with that all in itself. So I'm going to hopefully just ease in to being white. I don't really have gray. Mine's going to be white. And hopefully I'll just ease into it and I will learn how to fix it. And by the time I am 84, I will have it down pat and it won't be such a big adjustment at that age. Don't even know if any of that makes sense, but you know, a lot goes on up here that doesn't make sense out here. A lot goes on in here that doesn't make sense when it comes out here, but it still makes sense up here. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, so that's been going on. Gray hair. Um, I think that's all that's been going on as far as personal stuff. Um, Todd and I took three weeks and we went to visit family in West Virginia. And then we went to Charlotte to spend with the Grandies and our daughters and my mom. Um, and then we went to the yurt for a little while. And then we drove all the way back up here because I wanted my car up here. So we drove all the way back. And we're settling in. So, that is just a little backdrop of what I've been doing. I have been walking and enjoying the snowy weather here. It is 41 or 42 today, so that's a heat wave. I won't have to wear a hat or gloves when I go on my walk. And um, then Friday, the snow's back. I love it. I can take snow year round. So, I am wearing 
the koala sweater. No, not the koala, the Kalua. I'll show you. I had the thing was printed here. I'm going to try and set my coffee down over here. Ah, so I don't spill it. The Kalua by Baby Cocktails. Okay. I absolutely love this sweater. And so what we're going to do, we're just going to transition to what is out of my bags. I absolutely love this sweater, the finished product. I will tell you this, thank God for my sister who listened to me gripe probably at every twist and turn of this, of making this sweater. First of all, I will shoot some video at some point either and put it in the end of the whole thing. But first of all, the sleeves, um, I did not taper the sleeves as the pattern calls for because I could not make sense of what she was trying to, how she was trying to tell you to do the increases in pattern to where it would look right. Increases? Yes. Increases. It was not making sense to me. So I thought, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm just going to cast on the number of stitches that I'm going to have up here or not cast on, but add them after the ribbing. And I'm just going to have like a the balloon style to where you have your ribbing and then you just, it's not going to be tapered up. That worked beautifully. I really like the fit of that. Um, I don't know if I adjusted much else, but I will tell you, I frustrated myself through this pattern. It was not a knit to where I said, oh, I love knitting this. I, the pattern, the, the pattern itself, like the pattern, the knit pattern, the knit stitches were intuitive as long as you weren't, as long as you weren't increasing or decreasing. <laughs> My watch is talking to me. I must've hit something. Wikipedia is telling me about pattern. Um, what was I saying? So that was fine. It was just, and some of the air was my own. Like, I knit different sections where I should have, like, per my size, I thought I was knitting one size, so I knit, like, the whole half, top half of the back and realized I was knitting on the wrong side, so I had to take all of that out. Um, just different things like that. So, I, I had to take off the button band once. I mean, it's just little things you had to tweak every, every step of the way. I think this pattern is definitely written for an advanced knitter. Um, you you really have to have a lot of knowledge because she's just not the, that clear at, at holding your hand. You know, she, she's just a little, she, she assumes that you know more than what maybe you're, you would be comfortable with. Let me say that. Having said all of that, I will tell you with my knitting, I feel like maybe one of the reasons I have been brought to Wisconsin is just to just slow down and breathe. When I was at the yurt, I was all alone. He, he was up here working at least for the last, from April to December, I was all alone at the year. He'd come every now and then, but for the most part, I was alone. And it was hard. I had a lot of hard work to do. And I love yurt life, but it was just difficult being on my own. So I would not be as patient. Like things would irritate me or things would make me angry. Little things like, like making mistakes in your knitting. It would make me angry or just continuously dropping things would make me angry. Just when things didn't go smoothly, it would be more frustrating to me. So having come here, that kind of became a pattern for me in my life. And I could always use the excuse, this is hard, I'm all on my own. And it would kind of like go, that's okay, you can be upset. Well, coming here then, that would become a pattern. Like, it would be easy to get angry. 
instead of just stopping and going, okay, no big deal. You enjoy knitting, just, just re-knit it. And this pat, this knitting this sweater really has brought me back and centered me. So I could almost say coming to Wisconsin has really grounded me again and centered me and brought me back to where all those little things that would that would just frustrate me or make me angry, they don't have that power over me anymore because I've taken a deep breath and thought, okay, this is okay, you can get through this. Um, so that's one of the lessons. When I say to myself, what am I doing in Wisconsin? I feel like, okay, check. This is one of the things, you know, just slow down. It's okay. It's not that big of a deal. Just keep, redo it, re-knit it. And that's what I did with this. I re-knit it so much. Now, I did not do gauge swatch. Say it isn't so. I know. But I absolutely love the way this sweater turned out. It is bigger. I probably, let me see. I knit the size one, two, one, two, three, four. I knit the fourth size. I don't know what that would be. But I could have knit the third size very easily. I The needles I used were needles, the size that I used, I did according to the yarn. So I used Knit Picks Upcycled Alpaca Blend, and it's a worsted weight, and they called for a size six to nine needle, and I used a six. The pattern calls for, I need my glasses because I can hardly read. Excuse me. The pattern calls for size eight. So I maybe I didn't do a six. Maybe I did a, a maybe I did a seven. I don't know. No, maybe I used a size eight. I don't know. I'm sorry. I guess it doesn't really matter. I could have gone down a needle size and a size on the pattern easily very easily but it's okay because what I've been wanting is a, a um, sweater that's just like almost like a bathrobe one that I just wear with everything every day around the yurt or <laughs> I am so in the yurt frame of mind every day around the loft or wherever I am and this is it. It is big. Um, like, okay, this is the sleeves. I mean, like, this is how slouchy it is. But I love that. Um, I just love everything about it. I have worn it since it's been blocked. It's been two or three days. I've been, I've, as soon as it dried, I put it on. And I mean, every morning I get it about, get up. And I put it back on. I absolutely love it. So I don't know what that says uh, about doing gauge. <laughs> Always do gauge. Don't listen to me. I uh, I just didn't want to do gauge. I, I don't know why. I just felt like I'm over it. Probably because I've done gauge so many times. And sweaters still don't fit. And I'm thinking, why? I'm just going to, I don't care. I'm just going to do this. Plus, I didn't want to do gauge in this pattern because I find it hard when I do gauge when I do gauge swatches in the patterns that they're called for in the knitting pattern in the stitches. Unless it's just like um, stockinette or garter, I have a hard time reading the stitches. And I thought there's so much positive ease. Positive ease is another thing that really throws me. I just have a tr I have so much trouble figuring out positive and negative ease. I wish, and some some designers do this, I just wish they would give you the finished, finished measurement and you could decide if you want it that big or not. I guess there's so much more to design than I realize because 
you've got the arms and everything to think about, but I don't know. I, I did, point being, I did not do gauge, but I love the way this turned out. A lot of ramble. Okay, what else is out of my bags? Well, this, remember I was working on the garter, the, what is this called? I do have some notes, but let me see if I wrote down what the, the Stripe Triangle Garter Wrap by Pearl Soho. And I used the Pearl Soho's Good Wool. This thing is huge. But I'm finished. Boop, boop. That is so big. I, again, love it. It is amazing. It just, oh. I love the colors. I love everything about it. Oh, this comes in handy. Um, it blocks so big. It's really not thick, which I'm very happy about um, because I wanted it to be big to where I could wrap rather than um, thick and and more dense. I'm I'm just, I'm just thrilled with it. Um, so that is off of my needles. I did everything according to the pattern. So whatever needles, it is a free pattern on Pearl Soho. So whatever needle size they suggest and um, isn't that gorgeous? The colors, I bought the kit. This kit is on um, Pearl Soho's website as well. So that is out of my bags and oh my goodness, I've got fiber and now my nose is going to itch. Um, there's alpaca in this, and then this has got some fuzzies, so I hope that that's not going to continue to itch. I've been so busy, because that's two projects out of my bags, and this is a third project out of my bag. One, um, a couple episodes ago, the one that my sister and I recorded in together, we had just come back from meeting one of my, um, followers, and she had given me... Uh, uh, the lady that we had met had given me this Noro yarn to make um, a Petite Knits Sophie scarf. So I made one and I love it. Here is the scarf. So I made the small size and I love it. I guess there's a lot of ways you could wear this. I've even seen them wear it like tied down like this. Um, this is, like I said, the small one. It was such fun. I um, had messaged Linda, who uh, gave me the yarn, and asked her if one skein was enough to do the Sophie scarf, and she said yes. She had used this before with it, and it was enough. And I kept thinking, I don't but you know she's the expert I'll I'll trust her and I got to probably hear and realize mm -mm, don't have enough so what I did was I took it out to about well where the halfway point was and then I took out one uh repeat so I think you have to do it 18 times I did it 17 times and then I made that my center point which made me then have enough to have. I had this much left over. So I don't know, you know, skeins of yarn are like that. Sometimes that give or take, they're, they're off, but I really like this. So now I want to make a, a larger, the large Sophie scarf, and then I want to do the Sophie shawl. I love that. Uh, again, this is by Petite Knits. And it is such fun, such, such fun. These would make a excellent gifts to give um, to if you wanted to just knit something up really quick. I mean, you could do this probably in an evening, if not, definitely two evenings. It was, just, and it feels so good. It's just like the, just the right amount of warmth around your neck. Sometimes, you know, like if you just put your coat on and you just have that, you just need it's just something. You don't want to deal with a big shawl or a big long scarf. This is perfect. Of course, the large then wraps around, I think, one more time before it ties in. You actually could do that with this one. Oh, maybe that's a little too tight. But yeah, I really, really like that, of course. Um, 
And again, it is the Sophie Scarf by Petite Knits. That is all that's out of my bags. But I have been working on something fun. I've showed you this before. It is the um, Wool and Honey. Let me take it and see if I have a picture of it. By Andrea Mowry or Andre Andrea Renee Knits. It's the Wool and Honey sweater. And I'll show you how much I have finished. Not a lot, but enough to show. I have been working on this. So I'm almost finished with the yoke. I have, I think, like, I counted this morning. I think like four more rows and I'll be finished with the yoke and I can divide, um, separate the sleeves from the body. I love this color. I ordered this. This is, excuse me while I pull out. It's in my... A tinty bag, my llama a tinty bag. Got this years ago at Black Mountain Yarn Shop when Donna still owned it. But this yarn is um, loft. And it is the colorway uh, Cinnabar. I think that's what it is, Cinnabar. So loft and Cinnabar. I ordered this from Black Mountain Yarn Shop, and I don't even know how many skeins I ordered. I'm doing the size, um, let's see what size I'm doing. I'm doing the size medium, and I'm using size, I ordered seven Cinnabar, so I ordered seven skeins of this. And I am, doing size on a size four, size four needle. So this is how far I am. This is the front. I love the yarn. I love the project. And I think, I think I'm going to love this color, even with gray hair. What do you think? So there is the newest project I know I've showed you before, but it, it has been a while. So this is what I'm working on. I have got this passion for knitting sweaters now. It's like in my for the longest time it was shawls, 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 and socks, shawls and socks, always shawls and socks. Well, I have not really been in the shawl and sock mode for a while. I, I did socks. I did some what in December, January, the the pixie socks, the, the pixie house socks of mine. But um, I haven't really done any for a while. And there are so many that Charlotte and Marta have put out that I love and I'm going to be knitting, but I just haven't um, been in the mood to knit socks. I really have been wanting to finish what's in my bags. I've got so many in my project bag. So I thought, I just want to, I've been so good the last six months or so of just finishing what's in my project bags. I don't want to keep that up, but this, oh, I love it. So in my mind, I just want to knit this sweater and that sweater and this sweater and that sweater. And it's just like, I don't know if it's the cold weather of Wisconsin that's made me so sweater crazy, but I have really been wanting to knit sweaters. I got online last night and was looking and thinking, okay, what can I knit next? What can I knit next? And there's so many choices. I don't have all of my yarn up here with me. So when I go in March, I've got to grab some wool and bring back with me so I can cast on another sweater. But that is what is in my bags. And then I um, follow Chris from, uh, you know what? Chris Norrington, what is your handle? Chris makes, Chris, ah, I don't know. I'll put it down below. Anyway, if you follow, if you follow Chris on Instagram, her crochet is just like, out of this world where well, she had posted a blanket that she had made years ago and it made me want to make that blanket so bad I found when I was moving things up here I found a basket of a blanket that I had started so I thought okay I'm gonna use those squares and create from that my version of what Chris made 
So here are some of the squares that I found while I was packing or unpacking my things. I've got a whole big stack. I think I think I counted and there's like 18 squares with the blue. I don't want the whole blanket to be blue. So the next one I'm starting is I'm gonna make the, this will be the outer circle. So I'll have so many blue, so many of these, the same amount of blue, I'll have the same amount of this, and then I'm gonna just do, do a lot more different colors. I've got so much of Stylecraft yarn that I can choose from, and I'm going to put these to good use. I'm going to start making another blanket. I'm gonna try my best to put a shot of Chris's blanket that she made in here so you can see the concept that I'm going to be doing. Like I have all of these smaller squares and then around the outside, I'm gonna do bigger squares and then however she edged hers out, I'm gonna figure it out and I'm gonna do it. I did contact Chris and she did not have a pattern for it and she said it was so long ago, but I know her, she, well, I don't know her, but I know her. And um, so I know if I hit any bumps, I can just message her and say, hey, what could I do here? Her work is amazing. She has a new book coming out in March. And I looked on Amazon. You can pre-order it now or March 14th is when it comes out. So I'm going to order that book. She has so many crochet flowers. I'm going to put the link below um, to the Amazon. Uh, it's the stateside link. And so you can pre-order it if you love crochet. If you if you need to, you need to follow her because she is an amazing designer. Such fun things, bright colors, just so cheerful. And um, so I will provide you with all that information in the show notes below. But yeah, so those are the two active projects. I say active, I have not really started doing anything, but I am going to start this. I thought this might be a good thing to do on the plane. If I could make um, like five or six of these and then just work on the plane doing that. Maybe, I don't know. So those are the two active projects that I'm doing as far as knitting. And really, as that's all as far as knitting that I'm doing. Now, you'll remember I was doing a cross stitch uh, for my daughter for her birthday. I don't even know if I told you it was for my daughter, but it was for my daughter. It was for our youngest daughter. It was her birthday it was in February. And I made her this um, cross stitch. And she's an introvert like me, and we really don't mingle much out, out there. And so I um, I made her this, and I didn't give it to her with her birthday stuff, but we had sent her and her husband out for their, her for a birthday dinner, and we stayed behind, and we watched their, their three boys. And so while they were gone, I put that in the powder room, which is like the guest bathroom. And, and I thought, well, that'll be a cute place. It'll be a funny ha-ha for guests when they come in, go to the restroom. And I just put it in there. And I thought, she'll find it when she finds it. Because I thought, she I know from being there, she always goes to her bath, her, her the bathroom, the master bath in her bedroom. I don't you know, she probably doesn't go in the powder room only to clean it every now and then. I mean, we hadn't been two miles down the road when we left and she sent me a text. She said, oh my goodness, did you make this? I love it. And I'm like, I can't believe you found that already. And she was like, well, I had to use the bathroom really bad. So, um, so yeah, she found it. She loved it. I love that. I love just putting little things in, in people's homes and, and when I'm there and just letting them find it when they find it. So she loved it. I got that off the out of out of my bags, basically. So I want my other daughter. Our other, our oldest daughter has a birthday in September. She is a huge Halloween lover. I think I told you this. I did. Okay. So I wanted to um, find something to do to cross stitch her for her birthday in September. Well. One of my Nordic niches that I went to Norway with, uh, Rachel from Treehouse Fiber Arts. Rachel has um, floss toss. I think that's the name of it, Rachel. Oh, I hope I'm not butchering that. Anyway, with Sue, uh, Sue Stokes, 
Sue Strokes. <laughs> Sue. Stokes. I know it's not Strokes. Anyway, they together have a floss, to floss toss channel. And Rachel messaged me and said, you have got to watch our latest podcast, our, our latest YouTube podcast. And she goes, you're not going to believe, but Sue is doing Halloween stitch work. So I watched it. And it was like, oh, ah. so I ordered this one. It's the Witch Witch by La Di Da. And I'm going to do this for our oldest daughter. I hope this shows up. Oh, and there's a kind of a glare, but see that it's all black and it's all black thread on this color of, um, ah, see that? Oh my gosh, is that not going to be pretty? So I'm going to make that. The plan is I'm going to stitch that before September. So I'm going to start that soon so that I will not be in such a rush to get that done before her birthday. I just love it when everything lines up like that. That is going to be such fun to do. So that is something that I'm gonna be working on. And then I'm also going to start, you know, I do the paint by numbers and my niece bought a new house last year, last summer. And she went to Cape Cod shortly afterwards. And I said, if you will send me a picture I will, uh, of something, she was sending such beautiful posts on Instagram, and I said, if you'll send me a picture, I will paint something for your new home. And so she sent me this picture, and I, again, it's gonna, it's gonna, there's gonna be glare because of the window. Let me see. Can you see that swan on the lake? Anyway, there. That's the picture she sent me. So now, I'm gonna get started. I finally got this sent to me. I think I got it in November and I still have not started painting it. I need to paint it. I need to get it done before her, before at least before she's been there a year. I think she'll be there a year, July, August. Yeah, probably not when it finished, but at least I can send her updates and let her know that I haven't forgotten. I didn't make a promise I can't keep. So I'm going to be working on that. That will be fun. So I'm telling you this stuff so that the next podcast that I do, it will hold me accountable and I will have, have to work on it so that I can show you, look, I did get some things started. Okay. I have been doing so much reading. So let's jump to what is in my book bags. I've got a stack of books here that I had to write them down so that I would not forget all of them. Remember that we were gonna read before the coffee gets cold. Thank you for reaching out to me. Um, I enjoyed that book. However, I will say it wasn't a page turner, but it was like little short stories that were interesting. I, I enjoyed that book. I think this was it, in case you're interested. It's set in a Japanese coffee shop and um, it was fun. There's a little bit of time. Well, it is time travel. And um, I, I really liked the twists and turns that each time travel took. It really made you think about things that happened to you and how they can turn out. But I, I, so I did enjoy that. I know I've heard from several of you. Wait, I have heard from several of you and you have enjoyed it as well. So there's that one. Then I read, I read it on my Kindle. Okay, so Bowling Avenue by Ann Shane, so good. It was, I've read so many good books. I, it's like, I felt like I was in a slump for the longest time and my books were like, eh, yeah, I finished them, but eh. Well, recently I've been reading some that are just page turners. This was a page turner. It's about a girl who um, inherited her sister's home and of course her sister was a big knitter. So there's knitting throughout and it's basically uh, just a cute read. Um, of course, she was going to sell the house, but then she didn't. And she decided to stay, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, a very, very good book, Bowling Avenue by Ann Shane. And then I read, then I read The Messenger. 
It was really good. It was about an angel that came to earth to do a service. Oh, it was really, really, really good. So I read those two on my Kindle. Then on my Audible, I'm listening to um, Searching for Sunday, which is really good. It's about people. It's a. Uh, it's about um, loving, leaving, and coming back to the church. It's it's really really good. Um, I'm really enjoying that one. And then I read uh, the lost book of the book of lost names. Mm. Okay. My favorite genre, as, as you've heard me say for so long is world war II, um, the Nazi, like the Jewish end of the Nazis invasion. So this was, um, about a Jewish girl who lived in France and she was working for the underground and oh my goodness, it's, so good. Oh, so, so, so good. The Book of Lost Names. Then yesterday I started on my Kindle. Um, I did not write it down here, but Rain and Thunder. Is it Rain and Thunder? or Th Yeah, I think it's Rain and Thunder. And let me pull it up. By Charles Martin, Thunder and Rain. And it so far is um, about a man who has just come upon... A lady and, and her daughter in distress and he's kind of like rescuing them from this cop who um, has um, molested the little girl and, and and basically just he's protecting them it's so good I could hardly go to sleep last night I was just like kept one more chapter one more chapter one more chapter so it is um, let me get to the cover so you can see what it looks like Um, yes, it is Thunder and Rain by Charles Martin. That's really good. I'm just now starting it. So if you want to read it with me, that would be great. Um, so that is all. Oh, I'm not reading this. I, I am reading it, but it's not. It's a different kind of read. But I bought this Alistar Moore Aaron Knitting because I want an Aaron Jumper. So, um, I thought, uh, you know, I've read about Alice Star more for the longest time. Let me tell you how I, first of all, this is kind of going to segue into, um, podcasts that I, new podcasts to me, but I started watching, uh, her name is Ducky. Let me see. I think I wrote down what the name of her podcast is, Wool and the Forest. So, oh my goodness. Her name is Ducky, and she is amazing. I mean, she's just, her spirit is just so calming, and so, and she's so knowledgeable. And she was talking about the designs of sweaters, and how she, Elizabeth Zimmerman, really shaped her mind when it came to knitting. And, um, and it made me start thinking, okay, I really want to start reading and studying some of the ladies that paved the way for our knitting. And I actually was on reading about Elizabeth Zimmerman and I just didn't know what book of hers to get. And then I saw this one by Alice Starmore and I thought, okay, I really have wanted to do an Erin sweater. And so I ordered this and I'm just in the beginning stages of reading uh, basically about the Erin sweaters and, and how they came about. But uh, this is the one I really, really, really want to knit, I think, is going to be my first one. I just absolutely love that. And I know you're not going to be able to see that in any way, shape, or form. But that's the one I, I think I want to knit. I've already looked the yarn up. Of course, I'm knitting it in that color. Um, I think it will be very stunning with skirts, with pants. But... Um, so I am enjoying this read. I cannot, you know, say that um, I have the knowledge of some of these ladies that have um, just gone on before us and just really paved the way in this art of knitting. But I'm going to start studying them. I'm going to get some Elizabeth Zimmerman books. 
I want to read some more of the Alice Starmore books and just learn um, to become a better knitter and understand the constructions of sweaters. And I don't know. So that's, but that took me into, um, you, you really should check out the podcast, Wool in the Forest and um, Ducky. I really enjoy her, her whole vibe that her podcast give. Also, I've been watching Miranda Mills and it's a, a, a reading blog. And so if you want to to follow a reader, and it's a she also has just the coziest little lifestyle and uh, I'm enjoying her read, her, her podcast. Uh, one I just found out, yet found yesterday because I was watching, um, I've been watching a lot of podcasts while I'm knitting, but I was watching Loretta from Knit My Way Home and she was suggesting uh, it is a Sarah podcast. And oh my goodness, I was so hooked. I was just like binging on it. It is, it is a Sarah podcast. She, um, vlog, she vlogged every day in February. So that was really, it's, she's from Sweden, I think. I'm not sure. But, um, she has a cozy little cottage and just loved her knits. Um, so I was binging on that too. So maybe those will be some podcasts that help you out as you're knitting. Um, I have covered everything that I had show notes for. I have been, I have felt a bit out of sync this whole time I've been recording because I haven't done it for so long and that's on me. So I'm really gonna try to stay in the groove and knit every, not knit, knit every day, of course, but um, record every two weeks. Hopefully, hopefully that really happens. I can't make any promises, but that is my plan. So hopefully in two more weeks, I will be back here and we, I will be chatting and um, talking about all the crafty little things that I've done. I really want this weekend, I think I'm going to go to like Joanne Fabrics and get some fabric. And I think I want to make a skirt. I did bring my sewing machine up. And so I thought, oh, that would be fun. It's a skirt that in the summertime I could just wear. In the winter, I can slip some leggings on underneath of it, put a sweater on with it. You know, just all year round skirt. Just, just something to, um, I don't know. I just want to sew. I did bring a quilt topper with me. That is already, the quilt topper is finished, not by me, but by someone that my sister knew. A friend of my sister's mother passed away, and you may remember me showing you this, I don't know, a long time ago. And she gave these quilt toppers. She had all these quilt toppers, and she asked my sister. She knew I, I crofted and, and, and asked if I wanted them. Yes! So I brought one of those quilt toppers up with me. So I'm hoping to get that, you know, to get started on that. Just really all I need to do is sandwich it and quilt it and bind it. Easy peasy. I'm trying to decide if I want to send it off to, to get quilted or if I want to hand quilt it. I don't think I want to machine quilt this one. Um, I don't know but I did bring that with me. I brought a lot of stuff with me. You can, mm, I don't know what, what you can see. Right here is my bag tree. Right there is my bag. It looks like from uh, Button Jar Studios. It looks like the piece bag. <sighs> That's all I have to say. So, I guess instead of sitting here and rambling about nothingness, that I should just go ahead and stop because we are at 53 minutes, which means it's going to be well over an hour by the time I add the, the tour of everything. Shut this all down, go for my walk, and then come back rejuvenated so that I can edit. I hope you're having an awesome winter slash soon-to-be spring. We have a little bit more of winter before it's spring and... It's going to be winter here for a while, so I'm happy about that. 
wherever you are. You maybe even be having the summer going into autumn. No. Yes, summer going into autumn. Yes. So if that is your story, then yay, because I love autumn too. I just don't like summer. But I don't know. Maybe I'll like it more up here. Maybe it'll be cooler. Thank you all to everyone who gave me suggestions of things to do up here. I have a list. I have this little book that has has my show. I always keep my podcast information in it. It also has, I also have um, different sections. And I started a new section that is um, to be explored. And I've got a whole list of here of things that you have let me know about in the area that should be explored or experienced. So thank you. Keep those ideas coming. I have hit, um, someone left me some yarn shops. I did hit one of those yarn shops. Um, so, so far up here, I've hit two yarn shops. Um, I don't know that I'm going to even look for any for just a little while because I'm going to finish up. I want to do the, one of the Aaron sweaters and then I want to finish up some things that are in my bags. So I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's one of those things, you're, no, I'm not buying any more yarn or no, I'm not going to a yarn shop and then you drive by one or you, you just happen to Google to see if where you are, there's any. And like, oh, I'm just going to pop in to see what they have. And then before you know it, you're walking out the door with $80 worth of yarn. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you, too, for everyone who has supported me and supported my work through buying me a coffee. I have the link below if you want to buy me a coffee. I would appreciate that. It just makes all this work worthwhile. Thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that. Um, it just warms my heart every time I see that someone's bought me a cup of coffee. Um, thank you. I'm humbled, I'm honored, and I'm so excited about that. Also, if you want to follow this, uh, if you want to support me, encourage me, hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I absolutely love talking to you. It's such fun when I see a comment has popped up. It's like, oh, a friend. And I get to talk back and forth. So thank you for that as well. If you subscribe, then it also lets YouTube know, oh, you like that kind of podcast. Well, here's some like it. And it'll start showing up on your homepage too. So I found new podcasts that way. Just because I subscribed to someone, it also showed me ones that's, Almost like Netflix since you watched and then it gives you a whole bunch of shows you might like that's kind of like that one. Well, YouTube kind of does that with, oh, you like that podcast? Well, here's some more. So thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for buying me a coffee. Thank you for watching. Thank you for talking back with me. And thank you for being my friend, my crafty little friends. And yeah, we'll see you in two weeks. Hopefully. And until then... In everything you do, take it one stitch at a time.